the left gets violent, Justice Kennedy is retiring, and another active shooter event, coming up on Two Day with Two Cents. Hello everyone and welcome back to Two Day with Two Cents, wrapping up your weekly news. I have a shorter list of headlines this week, but all of them have definitely struck a chord. Folks on the political left have always been fond of calling anyone slightly right of Karl Marx a Nazi or a fascist. Strangely enough, the leftists are always the ones who use violence and intimidation right out of a fascist playbook. We even have a sitting member of Congress, Maxine Waters, calling for the harassment and intimidation of her political opponents. You think we're rallying now? You ain't seen nothing yet. Already, you have members of your cabinet uh, that are being booed out of restaurants. Who have protesters taking up at their house. He's saying, no peace, no sleep. No peace, no sleep. Let's stay the course. Let's make sure we show up wherever we have to show up. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. According to Waters and her ilk, all Americans deserve freedom and safety. So long as you agree with her. If not, you deserve to be harassed 24-7, at your home and in public. Agree with me or die. Such a tolerant, progressive stance. Since I'm a decent human being, I will not be calling on anyone to harass leftists for holding their views, but I will take great pleasure in continuing to refute their absurd ideas. Thankfully, when the facts are on your side, there's no need to resort to violence. I say the whole world must learn of our peaceful ways. By force. The left went crazy enough when Neil Gorsuch was nominated to the Supreme Court, but now Justice Anthony Kennedy, the centrist and frequent swing vote of the court, will be retiring. We've seen Justice Kennedy throughout all of these years of service on the bench at the Supreme Court, this centrist moderating force. And with President Trump in office and his recent uh, appointment of Justice Neil Gorsuch that's taken mm -hmm. the court in that conservative uh, realm, President Trump will get the chance to appoint a new justice here. And with, you know, just in the past, in this past term, we have seen, I think, about 19 cases that were 5-4 decisions. Justice Kennedy serving as the swing vote there in many of them. But this will really solidify once mm -hmm. President Trump gets the chance to nominate another justice, if he is successful in nominating an extremely conservative justice, as he did with Neil Gorsuch, this will give the court a real tilt, 5-4, for the conservatives. So Already, I've seen a barrage of tweets about how it's the end of the world. Roe v. Wade will be repealed. Trump will destroy America by appointing another conservative justice. However, what's even stupider than all the overblown leftist rhetoric is that there's even a debate about how a new Supreme Court justice could change the future in the first place. The Founding Fathers never intended for the Supreme Court to have the kind of power that it does. The Supreme Court was always intended to fill the role of an arbiter, not unlike the referee on the football field. It isn't the job of a Supreme Court justice to decide what laws are best for the country. It's their job to interpret the law as written in light of the U.S. Constitution, also as written. However, somewhere along the line, justices started getting the idea that the Constitution was just silly putty that could be stretched and reinterpreted in all kinds of ridiculous ways based on their own political persuasions. The court system has shown itself to have some of the greatest potential for corruption amongst the branches of government. People sometimes tell me that private courts would never work. To which I say, oh yeah? How are the ones we have now working? Hey, we all did it. If you want to be a Supreme Court justice, you gotta pick up that cherry with your butt cheeks and drop it in that beer. Come on! Go suitor, come on, do it! Go suitor! Go suitor! Go suitor! Go suitor. Go suitor. Go suitor. Oh, 
And in tragic news this week, five people were killed at the Capitol Gazette in Annapolis, Maryland, when they came under attack by an active shooter. Victims coming out, victims coming out. Police are confirming two down at this point, two down. The number of casualties quickly rising. Four down. We now know the number to be five killed, all of them journalists, at least two more injured. Heard a loud noise, like an incredibly loud bang. I saw a guy holding a gun. Uh, the door of the Capitol Gazette had been blown to pieces. Several shots had been fired, a uh, possible uh, shotgun, at least 10 shots heard. Tragedy hitting home for this local newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland. The Capitol Gazette, early this afternoon, finding themselves at the center of a national story. An active shooter situation unfolding inside the newsroom. I anticipated that the left would turn this into another opportunity to rant about how we need more self-defense device control. However, since the weapon used wasn't an AR-15, I guess they instead decided to blame this on Donald Trump. Something about how his rhetoric has inspired violence against the media. What a surprise. Something bad happened, so it must have been Trump's fault. As it turns out, this guy was just some nut who lost a defamation suit against the paper a few years ago. Thankfully, the law enforcement response to the event seems to have been fairly successful. But then, we'll always have to wonder if maybe fewer people would have died if there'd been more armed citizens at the paper. Just take what you want and go! <gasps> Haley, quick! Get the gun in the china cabinet! <laughs> <laughs> I... I shot him. Murderer! Just kidding. You saved the family, kiddo. Pizza? Let's order pizza. In other news... Oh, screw it. Let's just get to the weekly hottie. Drum roll, please. This week's weekly hottie has been sizzling the modeling world between her work at Victoria's Secret, Sports Illustrated, and many other places. You guessed it, it's Barbara Palvin. The following clip came from a video titled, Barbara Palvin Has Never Looked Hotter. And she certainly hasn't. Now, three years ago when they booked me, I was just really not comfortable in, in my body. And actually, you can see it on the pictures. Like, if you compare the photos I had three years ago and I have in this issue, it's totally different. The first one you see, a girl trying to be sexy, a girl trying so hard. But these photos, you see a strong woman who really loves herself and very confident. Hard to believe the month of July will soon be upon us. Before long, it'll be my one year anniversary here on YouTube, and I'm planning a special live stream event to celebrate, so stay tuned. That's it for this week. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And that's my two cents, so take it for what it's worth.